So welcome to another Exploring Consciousness with the Earth Novo Hub. Very, very excited today that we have uh, the lovely Irina Esmond. She's going to take over the reins in just a minute. And the topic, I just put the topic as, uh, what did I say in the topic? Remembering, the great remembering, right? How can we, you know, create a completely new world? Because this is really very much up Irina's, uh, Irina's path, right? And I'm just going to hand it over to you, Irina, Thank who is you. also, you know, uh, originally from Kiev, right? From the Ukraine. Yep. So I'm really excited to, to learn a little bit more about, you know, because Irina is, is a teacher of the School of Remembering with, uh, with my, my, um, Melchizedek. Bruno and Melchizedek. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, you know, you've been on for, for, for so often now and you always contribute so, so, so greatly. So it's really nice to hear a little bit, you know, your background and what kind of teachings you do, what kind of work you do. And of course, as usual, we'll have all the questions and, and everything at the end of the day. So over to you, Irina, take it away. Thank you very much. I'm very happy and excited to be here with you and with uh, all our uh, Earth Nouveau people and share my path, my vision and uh, my remembering uh, how I came to this point where I am now and of what I am doing uh, in my life to uh, initiate to like you already showed uh, on your uh, inspire people to remember and uh, look into future uh, without baggage of the past, but with um, uh, remembering of the past transformed into tool. Uh, this is kind of like in very, very short, uh, my direction. And I came from, uh, like you already mentioned, I came from a uh, uh, background to being born in Ukraine, uh, Kiev, uh, in normal family, uh, like uh, any other family having some problems uh, uh, as usual. And um, no one in my family actually looked into direction where I am today. Uh, they, on contrary, were kind of like against of this, uh, not understanding because it was scary. And I received my first uh, uh, look into this remembering uh, in uh, 1989, when I uh, suddenly from nowhere, if you ask me today how I get into that group, I don't remember. I never was interested in that kind of uh, um, a type of life and that kind of uh, vision. Uh, like I said, at that point, I was normal person living my married life already, having two kids, husband, normal work. Everything was working, but something kind like, you know, that feeling inside, something more to that, something more. And I, I got into this group and I was so lucky. I was staying with that group for five years, uh, uh, 10 uh, uh, it, um, um, consecutive uh, sessions of uh, several months, kind like uh, his uh, vision of, of the teacher was, and we would meet two times a week for three hours. And everyone was coming after work from their uh, family uh, overwhelm and life overwhelm. And it was perestroika time, you know, perestroika, it was, no certainty at all. Everything was in um, in a way of change, but no one even knew where we're going. It was uh, traditional, a kind like grayish uh, in that area of um, uh, uh, in that country, or even in that Eastern Europe type of life, grayish. At that time, it was really gray. You know, like it was pretty strange. Me coming after five years spending in Hungary, in Budapest and looking into that uh, pretty happy lifestyle. I returned back to Kiev 
and it was kind of like so depressing, unbelievably depressing. So I got into that group and he, that my first teacher, he was genius. He understood completely uh, how uh, energy works in terms of life, uh, what can shake energy and how you can uh, refresh energy very quickly. And he was coming from the ground of uh, being um, a theater uh, director. So he knew and his work in theater was based on humor. So we would start each uh, meeting, like I mentioned already, two times a week for three hours. We would start, he would call it parade. And he would take from audience the most troubled person who would be completely out of sync with life or with even understanding how to look into this life. And he would walk with that person just asking normal questions. And that person would be so out of sync. And that conversation would be so funny. We would dying laughing for 15 minutes. So and after those 15 minutes of laughter, and it was joyful laughter from heart, not judgmental laughter, because we would recognize this is who we are. That person working today, it's me tomorrow or me yesterday. So we would laugh and that energy would become so bright. And after that, he would bring some kind of exploration tools, some kind of research, what he was interested in. So, like I said, I was staying with them for five years. It was very happy time in my life. First, my uh, meeting with them, I was sitting those three hours with eyes like huge plates, looking at them, looking at me, looking and asking, is this true? Is this, and this is true? And this is true. So I was so much enjoy those three hours. After three hours, he was giving us first meditation expansion. You are like this room. You are like this building, like the city, like this country. You are like earth and you go out. And when I went out, this strange phenomenon came to me first time, first time even looking at those people, being with those people, hearing those people. I saw huge ball of shimmering brilliant light, wide brilliant shimmering light with my eyes closed in front of me. And I knew something alive inside. I knew it's alive. I didn't ask a thing. I was so uh, surprised and, and at the same time, it was so normal to see that in front of me. And when I opened my eyes, I looked into the world and I said, it's not real. That thing in my meditation that I saw in my meditation was real, really alive. Even I didn't see anyone inside. I knew it's something alive there, but I didn't see anything anyone i didn't hear anyone but i was just looking and then i opened eyes and it was not real and this is my uh, way started to go uh, and continue my exploration trying to return back to that connection to that live um, representation of this universal experience that i saw further on i understood it was my higher self but at that point I didn't know terms, I didn't know names, I didn't know anything, but it was so real that made me going. And I was continuing with my exploration for, uh, from that moment on, all the time, looking into new teachings, new people, new teachers, reading tons of literature. I was lucky because at that point it just opened. Everything was flooded in Kiev. We had a special market where we had only books and half of that market was spiritual books. So it was huge uh, advantage at that time. So I had library at home. I was reading like crazy. I changed my work. Even my work wasn't bad, but I changed to closer to assist me with what was interesting for me. So, uh, and at some point I came to the US and, you know, I already had a lot of 
uh, pieces that I put kind like together, try to connect into one map to understand what is life about and not just human normal life, but what is beyond that our experience as humans. And uh, uh, at some point, uh, I made this teaching that calls uh, Awakening the Illuminated Heart. It was not called the same in the beginning. In the, in the beginning, it was still teaching uh, kind of like backwards, uh, what you can find in Drunvala books, uh, in, um, in his uh, a flower of life, secret, ancient secret of flower of life. He described this synthetic Merkaba and everything built to the point to bring this knowledge about synthetic Merkaba. Merkaba, it's a light body. It's a human light body. And you can um, see from different teachings uh, uh, different elements of that light body because that light body, you can divide what they say, for example, in Hindu um, to up to 27 different meaningful parts of that light body. But Merkaba, it's kind of like all together uh, um, brought into one concept of your energy body. And uh, before he started Drunvala, before, before Drunvala started to teach uh, awakening the illuminated heart, it's ancient style, ancient way to uh, activate that energy body, even to become aware you have that energy body around you and what it does, what meaning when you aware and conscious about energy body um, around you, what it gives you, what kind of possibility it's opening for you. And um, he was teaching that male style uh, backward style. And uh, in uh, that backward style, uh, information about heart that I see major point of those teachings, of his teachings, it's a heart. Not just like we know heart connected to emotions that form our duality experience, but heart as technology technology. So uh, that uh, first his uh, approach, what he did, that backwards teaching, I don't remember even talking about heart. It was very mental, very um, um, male, like brain oriented type, how to activate that Merkaba. But he was asked to do that. Why? We were not ready to talk about heart. When we, you would talk to uh, logical people about heart, they would say, what are you talking about? We don't know what you're talking about, this very loving things. Uh, we're not talking about that. Give us something that we can practice, that we can repeat, yeah? So, and he was asked to do that style. In 2011, he start to do this kind of uh, activation of everything. And it's not just Merkaba. Merkaba, it's a last point. And like I said, major point in all those teachings, awakening the illuminated heart, it's a heart as technology, spiritual technology. So, uh, and at that point, uh, I found him in 2009 and I felt inside of me not completely understanding because I didn't get anything in the beginning. I couldn't do it. I was just knowing from inside, this is gives me everything. Like, you know, like point where I can go from, like a point, central point uh, from where everything can be put into mapping. Uh, and I was going into that direction. And like I already said, in 2011, I even moved to Sedona uh, just to be closer to headquarters, but it didn't mean anything. He would be showing only four workshops, four workshops a year. And after that, you wouldn't see him randomly, maybe in store, you know, maybe. But it wasn't like big uh, uh, 
continuation of those teachings uh, um, offered for people who would want it to be closer to those teachings, because it is a personal experience and we know that already. It is personal experience and at workshop, he would give everything you need in understanding heart technology. And then with that understanding, you can open your third eye specifically connected to uh, your heart. So it's like a single eye, single eye connected to heart, looking not in duality perception of the world, but in, in the unity of those spatial spaces inside of heart. And uh, then you activate your Merkaba and you actually have everything. Now you just live your life in connection to heart. So this is nice time now to talk me about heart and heart technology. Uh, by the way, uh, I see that teaching awakening the illuminated heart. It's like reminding who we in our essence, but it's not complete in my understanding in how you can use it today because we are not in ideal world today. It's a strange world, we are in transition time. So it's pretty uh, difficult to live from your heart uh, if you don't understand. So when I found Andrew teaching, that was really another piece that gave me possibility to connect what is Andrew giving to us, that kind of remembering, how to look into duality experience, how to transform the duality experience, plus that uh, element of heart as a center of everything, center of creation that I get from Drunwala teachings. So in my workshops, even it's still awakening the illuminated heart, I give 50-50 what is uh, Drunwala giving to the world, that heart piece and Merkaba and everything connected to heart, plus Andrew stuff. Everything Andrew shared, everything uh, he already put out, it's a huge thing to make it practical, living from your heart, really being in your heart and live life like uh, what we are involved today. So what is that heart technology? Oh, by the way, uh, I can talk forever. <laughs> if you already have questions, uh, uh, you just stop me or say to that point, uh, any questions, or I can talk everything and then we will have Q&A. So your choice. Yes, Amy, uh, uh, unmute, please. Um, uh, hi, everybody. Um, so I missed some of the conversation, but the Merkaba, the Merkaba and the heart, are, it, isn't that a, is that a field around us? Yeah. That, is, that protects us? Uh, it's, it's more than protection. You see, uh, in this teaching, we are looking uh, into flower of life. Yes, okay. this is that sacred geometry that is behind me. You can see that uh, pano behind me. It's a flower of life. And it is kind like a blueprint for this universal creation. Again, from point of view, Melchizedek level of consciousness. Uh, if you look into different stages of experience of this universe, who knows, maybe we will find something else because uh, Andrew already saying one creator and he can say it is two creators, three, four, five. So it is more to that, but this is good point to start remembering because we are all now talking about some kind of oneness experience, yes? And that structure, that geometrical shape, flower of life, very much connected to uh, that experience of oneness, unity and heart. So let me say our Merkaba field, it's a, uh, uh, what we see Merkaba field, it's like a flying saucer, yes? Uh, shape of a flying saucer, like uh, exactly what you can recognize on the sky. And that shape, that field around us, uh, depending on your height, 55, 60, 65 feet in diameter. 
the brightest, the most expanded part, yes? And height, it's really your height of uh, your flying saucer shape. It's your height plus one hand lens, your hand lens above your crown, and one hand lens beneath your feet like Leonardo uh, guy staying. Mm -hmm. This is that, and that sphere, Leonardo sphere. We sometimes call our um, uh, sphere around our body, Leonardo sphere, but this is like uh, in miniature flower of life around your body. It's a real structure of universal structure that is bringing you unity experience. Like I said, what is more to that? Yes, it is more to that, but this is a good point to start your remembering. Why? Because it is connected to your heart. So that part of your body, energetic body, your Merkaba field, uh, it is part, real part of creation. So it is not just protection and you need to put your energy. It is giving you energy. It is giving you connection to universe. When you activate your Merkaba, you are part of universe consciously and you exist as a part of universe at that point. And uh, did I answer your question, Amy? Yeah, because I, I always thought the Merkaba field was around us and that um, it, it, it was like something you had to, not had to, but um, a, a form of protection in a way and, and, and that whatever entities or anything can get in there, right? It can get in. So you have to say certain things about talking to your Merkaba field, like to keep it, to keep it, I guess, flowing and enter your energy in it because things can get in it. Is that correct? It is true. It is true. Especially if you look into that backwards teaching that he had to put out just to activate interest into very logical people. Yeah. And it is, uh, it was like major point of those teachings at that time. But then uh, when he stepped into natural activation of Merkaba, uh, it is that and protection. And at the same time, it is your continuation. And uh, when you activate your Merkaba from heart, this is a natural activation of, of Merkaba from your heart. So when you activate from your heart, you made that field working for you. Plus, you activate from unity space that is inside of your heart. So your Merkaba become unified and you spread in message into world. I am unity at that point. I am unity. I recognize unity. And those who are not in that vibration actually not coming to you close if you don't have opened portals from your past duality experiences that is Andrew part of teaching yes that I brought to this thing so you when you activate your Merkaba from your heart you become that unity signal to universe this is my direction for experience and this is what I want to invite for co-creation so it is and protection, but at the same time, if your freak, it's, it is your freak, signature frequency at that moment. And you don't need to put your energy for that protection. You're already giving that signal into universe. This is my uh, choice for experience. But of course, without closing those portals, those doors and windows of duality experience, Yes, when we opened everything just to become masters of limitations, yeah, to go to limited and limited and limited direction, uh, you uh, can't even uh, open your Merkaba, you can't even go to your heart. That's why when I found Andrew, it was completion, how I can bring everyone, everyone, I mean everyone, to activate all that and found their heart spaces. Uh, and uh, so let me continue about heart. Any questions till now? Yes. 
I just have a comment about the flower of life. Um, I dropped a slide in the chat that actually has pictures of the flower of life found all around the world, which I think is, is really cool. Yeah. Thank you, Tanya. Thank you. Yes, this is what he is describing in that ancient uh, uh, secret of flower of life books. He's showing that that knowledge was uh, known all over the world. And it just because we were aiming to uh, become those masters of limitations, everything was so flooding to us, we just forgot. We had to forget. If you remember this stuff, uh, you won't consciously remember, I mean consciously, because we never forgot inside of us ever disconnected from all that, but consciously we choose not to remember that stuff. Uh, so, uh, and uh, if you um, uh, consciously remember about that, you will never go into limitations beyond the some level and uh, consciousness who we are, we saw opportunity to go to the bottom of experience of this playground we call our universe. And this is why we forgot consciously, but like I am saying, we never disconnected from that experience, from that vibration inside of us. I just it might be a stupid question, but what's the difference between the macabre and the auric field? Mm -hmm. uh, different. Uh, auric field, this is again from explanation of Drunvala, yeah, and my point of remembering of that scene, auric field connected to seven um, uh, colors of experience, and it is connected to uh, our uh, emotional body inside of this uh, skin suit that we call right brain. When we talk about Merkaba field and that uh, uh, alpha sphere or uh, Leonardo sphere that is around your body, that structure, like I already said, diameter would be that um, stick one hand lens above your crown and one hand lens beneath your, beneath your feet. That circle, that sphere around our body, this is our inner boundaries inside of Merkaba field. It's an inner shell of Merkaba field. It's connected to heart, unity of heart. This is difference. It's, uh, did I answer your question? Yeah, thank you. I'll yeah. Just... Yeah. Anything else? Okay, so let me say a couple words about heart and those energetic spaces in our heart. And it is connected to emotional body. And depending uh, on emotional body you are using uh, in choice of your experience, uh, you will have uh, your experience colored by that emotional body. It sounds strange, but uh, when I, I'm starting talking about the spaces inside of heart, this energetic spaces, this is where I, I can talk about emotional body that is different from emotional body that we call right brain. So this teaching, Drunvala teaching, recognize two emotional bodies and two heart chakras. When we look seven chakra system, it doesn't show, it's just one heart chakra. When we look 13 chakra system, it's showing upper heart chakra that we call thymus and lower heart chakra that we call actually heart chakra, yes? And uh, those two connection of your heart to upper heart chakra or to lower heart chakra, giving you completely different experiences. And even more, that emotional body that we know as our emotional body that is involved in seven colors experience connected to upper heart chakra. And when heart connected to upper heart chakra, you experience based in heart. You understand when I say when heart, yes? You experience based in heart. And we all heart-based people heart-based beings, even we jumped to our brain at some point, just like again, to forget some 
teachings about heart. But when we create our experience connected to upper heart chakra, it's connected to uh, right brain emotional body. And you can name that experience of love, I love you, but. This is when heart connected to upper heart chakra. This is that connection that is going with our emotional body, right brain that is still polarized. And it's giving heart love experience, I love you, but. When we remember about lower heart chakra that is connected to some subtle space inside of heart, we call it tiny space. We call it tiny space. Remember, we were talking about toruses, energy toruses uh, created by heart. That is heart mass recognizing and already showing diagram. We have two donuts around our body created by heart. Yeah, we call toroidal fields. And uh, smallest uh, uh, torus connected to inner space of heart that we call tiny space. Bigger one connected to outer space, energetic space of heart. We call it sacred space of the heart. So two places, subtle places, subtle energy places inside of our physical heart. And they are inside of our physical heart. So when we find that our way to go to the tiny space of the heart, Breathe, guys. I know it's overwhelming. <laughs> it's a lot of things. And you remember it now. Just breathe, expand, and just relax. Don't pay attention too much to my words. Pay attention to energy of your body now, what you're remembering. It's opening something inside of everyone. So when you find our way to tiny space, set most centered space of our heart energetic. This is where that oneness unity experience exists in our completely polarized body today. There is no any other place inside of our body where we can really experience that oneness unity. And when we got into that place, that vibration, it is all vibrational. When we got into that vibration, you connect to different emotional body if you can call that that emotional body. I didn't find too much um, uh, description of that emotional body more than uh, when I was researching information about Hathors, you know, those beings that, who were involved in uh, Egyptian exploration, Egyptian time. They describe their our bliss, our bliss, human bliss. They are lowest emotional state. Just feel it. Just imagine our bliss that we call, I can't expand more. I'm done. This is a more expanded me. I can even function. This is their lowest emotional state. So in my understanding, that uh, emotional body that is connected to unity experience, it's a bliss emotional body. And this is what I see key to uh, higher consciousness experiences. And if we look in different teachings uh, on, the, um, uh, on the surface uh, of our world, uh, and we see they all talk about some kind of blissful state and then something opening for them, kind of blissful state and then something more opening for them. So it's kind of like confirmation, but I didn't find too much information about how to call even that body, emotional body. In my experience and what I see in other people who comes to me, this is that bliss emotional body. This is state of joy, state of um, happiness, all that thing. And part of activation Merkaba, it's an opening so die in connection to your tiny space of your heart. And to do that, you do need to produce those waves, those brain waves, we call them alpha brain waves. That is happiness. And it is recognized in Kriya Yoga, the same thing. They use tan connecting to your roof of the mouth. And this is specific connection that is creating 
uh, making your brain to produce that alpha waves, that is happiness, that is joy. When you look at baby just born or even when it starts to be more conscious in this world, you can recognize that vibration of that alpha. It's a joy. And you immediately step into that vibration yourself, just looking at those, uh, those babies. So this is that vibration. This is that emotional body. And uh, heart, uh, this is those energetic technologies inside of our physical heart. And it, is give, um, uh, it gives possibility to understand structure of universe that is never started, never ended. It just transforming, it's changes only constant. It just moving from infinitely big into infinitely small. And this is what gives you possibility to touch it. Because we um, explore in our experience as humans through Fibonacci sequence that is starting with zero, it has beginning. It doesn't have ending, uh, but it has beginning. We couldn't bring to our human experience golden mean. But when you start to look into sacred geometry information, everything based on golden mean, not Fibonacci. So this is gives you kind, like I said in the beginning, flower of life, giving you central point of understanding of this universal experience of oneness, of oneness. So um, in your heart. So can I just interrupt for one second before you carry yeah. on? I just wanna see if I've made a connection here that is correct, yeah? So when you talk about the alpha state that is connected to the to the tiny to the tiny brain, tiny space of the heart, tiny space of the brain. So that that is actually we're talking about the pure bliss present, being present in the moment, right? So you're saying we're going from that um, higher heart, yeah, the thymus. The two hearts you were talking about now the higher heart is very much the spatial awareness connected to the spatial awareness and that very much links up with what we're saying is the inward journey but disconnecting from the outside from our spatial awareness and not actually um getting too upset or involved in the outside that we can go into that inner tiny space that bliss state that being completely present that alpha state is that correct it is, and our spatial experience based and go coming from that inner space. Coming this is how we, yes, yes. This is how we stepped into this uh, spatial experience of a surface as a humans and infinitely big universe that unfolding outside that we can see with our perception tools, yes? And everything came from the tiny space. So it's the, the beginning of everything. Yep. Okay. So uh, I just want to follow on with my thought here. So I see if I'm on the right track here, because that very much that tiny space is that that tiny space that is the first uh, bit of heart that is created in the fetus of the womb, right? Yep. Yep. So the fetus of the womb teaching is actually one of the biggest teachings out there, bigger than than anything else, because it actually leads us to the tiny piece, to the tiny heart that is now taking over, right? That exactly, okay. exactly. Fetus in a womb, this is that first creation that you create as a heart, yeah. as a consciousness that created heart technology. Okay, so good, thank you. I just wanted to make that point. So let's keep that in mind. Thanks. Yes, yes, of course. Uh, uh, I'm not inviting you and uh, giving this uh, information about uh, heart and spaces and heart and bliss state to finish with your normal life. No, I'm inviting you to live your life, today life, being grounded in that place, but still being human still having your external experience, still continuing with your experience. 
So I'm not inviting you to go to heart and sit there. For what purpose? You came here to have experience and we are today humans. And this is what I am uh, bringing in our awareness. This is that return way how to put out that oneness, out that unity instead of duality. And I call duality experience our old way or of experiencing as a consciousness. We done with that exploration. We done with duality. We explored everything possible not to destroy completely our initial uh, um, uh, intention for experience. And in connection to flower of life teachings, in uh, initial uh, intention for experience was everything in this playground that we call our universe based in love vibration. Again, not this one, not upper heart, but lower heart chakra, that vibration of love. I love you no matter what. And this is only one place in us today who really holding that vibration. I love you no matter what. And when people try to put those experiences together, and connect them logically. This is what I see in people, the biggest problems starting to appear in their lives. They try to put that unconditional love as a signature of their uh, life choices and uh, life uh, uh, vibration, but it's not possible in duality world. And this is where problems come into their world. No one understands me uh, and uh, why everyone not showing the same vibration towards me? Because you can't connect those two experiences. They are completely different experiences. Duality, I love you, but. And unity, I love you no matter what. So when you anchored in that center, because we recognize in this teaching, tiny space as center of creation from where everything was brought outside. And when we go with remembering, you really come to this experience because this teaching mostly experiential. You have your experience. Without your personal experience, it's just words. It's nothing, really nothing. It's just talking, talking, talking. But with your experience, you come that everything, everything around you, you brought out, you put out, and that everything coming as energetic vibration, everything and nothing, everything in potential, that vacuum from where everything coming, it's your tiny space. This is a space where you and source are one. Of course, to the point of your vibrational personal you can come to vibration personally where that connection you and source will be so complete really and you send that wave outside around you uh, so it is that moment when we can really now look all the experience of duality we done yeah and to have the duality experience, we had to disconnect our remembering of heart and uh, center all our experience on duality of brain. And now when we remember, we already done with duality experience. I'm not so much interested even to live my life in duality. I want to live my life in unity, in oneness. You can center again back in your tiny space and start to bring into your world that remembering. Again, we are in transition time. So you will adjust duality that is still here with that oneness unity that we want to bring out there as much as we want. You will adjust it, but it won't be a beating and struggling process. It will be very happy process. How you can navigate in all this transition time 
and bring more and more oneness in your world. And I'm saying in your world. I'm not saying in world. I'm saying in your world. Why? Because you are today center of your world, center of creation. And creation happening from your heart. And then so, uh, this moment of co-creation stepping in, in the picture. We all want to co-create. We all want to have some equal uh, partner, some equal uh, point of view uh, on that in connection to consciousness. And this is what that brand new experience when you can find in a world someone with who you can look into eye to eye and laugh with who you can really co-create that uh, joy, excitement on earth and in universe going through different races, different experiences of outer universe, infinitely big universe. So questions still now. Are, are you are you um, are you able to give us an experience, or do you want to yeah. do it later? Or yeah, later, yeah, okay. Yeah, uh, yeah. I want to, I want to bring one moment, uh, Robin. I want to bring us through experience of unity breath meditation that is creating special vibration in you, that is the same or in synchronicity of your sacred space. I won't be able to bring you to hard spaces because it is kind like uh, we need to go through preparation, but unity breast meditation, it's a beginning. So I will give you experience of unity breast meditation. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Robin? Um, hi, everyone. Um, what I wanted to uh, put in there was uh, what I kept seeing and feeling kind of when you were speaking. And that is, is that what we are experiencing outside right now in the world and every single land of this earth and in the spaces and in the waters and the airs and all the animals and the trees and stuff are all experiencing it is this crescendo a finale of the 4th of July, which is that division, you know, trying to make us believe that two points on a spectrum are separate and disjointed when it's just, you know, a spectrum and we're going from one end to the other. So in the outside world today, what Irene is speaking of is what we're seeing as to, to, to show us emotionally on every level that we could possibly be, is this really what you want to keep? Do you really want to keep it this or this? Well, they're part of a, a spectrum. They're part of a sphere. There's no, you know, they're just two little points of infinity of the whole thing. So the world right now and all of our experiences with what's going on, and you all know what I'm talking about, medicines, facial restrictions, whatever. It's really making a crescendo of all of those things that we didn't know about, we kind of accepted, we kind of wish someone else would do, and we kind of stepped out of. And it's just really like the final finale showing us again the whole thing on fast forward. Do you want to keep this or do you want to move on and see it as just a little bit of the whole? You know. Yes, Robin, agreed completely. This is where we are. We are in a great finale. It, it's, it's true. That's why I, I'm saying I can't bring you guys to heart now yet because it needs preparation. And everything you, you said, Robin, about that uh, on a plate now, two sides or even more sides of uh, whatever, and it's charging people with charge, emotional charge. People have their personal attitude to any experience that going on today in the, in the world. And it is, other words, if you're already looking from that unity space, it's an invitation of creation to celebrate your finale, to look into that and uh, recognize it is 
several sides, two sides, whatever, of the same thing. It is experience. And this is that preparation that bring already that celebration, vibration into your body, into your field, and making possible for you to go to heart. So I see what is happening now. It's an invitation to celebrate, to make that final firework for everyone personally and step to that new vibration in truth, old vibration of remembering. It's not new. This is how we came to this playground. We started at, at least at some point with this uh, intention for oneness unity experience. Yes, thank you, Robin. Pleasure. Can I ask you a question, Irina? Yep. Uh, before you move on any further, um, you mentioned um, the term the master of limitation, and uh, I kind of missed what you sort of said, um, but you were um, saying that we came here, I believe, to become masters of limitation. Um, but that created uh, for us uh, something that um, disconnected us or closed us off from our, some field or something like that. Could you expand on, on the master of limitation and what you were referring to and said? I'd appreciate that. Thanks. Uh, thank you, Lana. Very nice question. And uh, masters of limitations, I got the term from Bashar, the Sri Lanka channeling uh, Bashar, his future being uh, in the future. And I got this term from his explanation about our experience. Because if you try to look, to use our logic of duality, it is very hard to even explain why we are so insane today in our experience, in our choices. It just, it just doesn't make any sense. Person who has any of self-respect would do what we would do in this life, you know? It doesn't make any sense with our logic. But when I heard about this masters of, limitation, of limitations, it was like making sense immediately. Yes, of course, consciousness, who we are, we are consciousness, was just using possibility of this place to go into direction of those limitations, duality limitations, yes? With everything that is Andrew describing what happened in this universe, it makes sense. It just makes sense. At least it's holding you in some kind of, uh, I don't know, future, bright future, uh, and giving you possibility uh, to really stop worrying and going into that vortex of uh, limitations and oppression and all that thing. It's just holding you in some place until re you remember. But uh, when we came here again in connection to this vision, Flower of Life, we came uh, to create this playground uh, to have experience of oneness not limitations, it didn't come in the beginning. It was uh, like Andrew described, seven dimensional level of experience having physical bodies. In my understanding, when I'm tuning in my remembering, uh, duality even started in the beginning as density, more dense experience, less dense experience, like a cat in a jungle or bird in the sky. It's my remembering personal of about beginning of limitation. And then everything, you know, you can't even uh, say what is first egg or chicken. This is how it's all happening here. Everything happening at once. Uh, so, uh, but to connect to our linear experience, this is how you can look into that that we started our intention, consciousness intention for this playground was based in love vibration, unconditional love vibration. And then everything started to happen. Did I answer your question, Lana? Um, yes, you sort of did. Um, I do believe that I have heard Andrew use the same term, masters of limitation. And um, while you were talking, I was 
the thought came to me, um, this is where we're at now. This is a school of hard knocks where um, we came here to have the experience and we've gotten to the, to the point of limitation where we can go no further anymore or we probably explode the universe or something like that. <laughs> yeah, it became um, <laughs> school of hard knocks. It became yeah. school of hard knocks because of all those circumstances. To my understanding, you can recognize three forces, minimum three, like major uh, definition of force uh, uh, having experience here. One, it's a love mentality, what I see. Another one, war mentality, what I see. And another one, domination and control mentality. It's okay. like a major scoops of direction of uh, uh, experience, what I recognize. So we are returning now this playground to experience of oneness. And with entry revocations, we can do it very uh, actually uh, practically when we, we recognize any experience today in this our brand new possibilities. Uh, I recognize Mother Earth and universe already prepared playground for that brand new experience. It's only us who are just stepping and started to unfold uh, what kind of experience we want to have. So when we recognize something around us from our past that is reflecting into our today that is not based in love, that unconditional love, we can all the time with revocation, with heart, not denying, not pushing away, but say it is not place now here to have that experience based in war or any domination and control. And we can send those beings. And the more of us will do it, the quicker we will spread this unity, oneness uh, uh, vibration for our experience. Uh, but we can set to those intentions, those beings with those intentions. Thank you very much, like Andrew taught us, uh, for your service. Uh, your presence no longer needed. We are changing here rules for experience. We're done with duality, we're done with limitations. We are now remembering that oneness, that uh, experience of unlimitedness and beauty and vibration, I love you no matter what. And just direct them, uh, to that 18th universe. And uh, this is can yeah. bring quicker uh, answer to our desire from inside to live in oneness, to live in unity. Yes, I, I agree. Um, because uh, when I think about it, we are really at the point of uh, zero, almost zero choices. Um, if you think about things and situations that we find ourselves in nowadays, uh, so we are the masters of limitation. We can go no farther than this, or we'll just crack. <laughs> it, Something will know. fundamentally change in us, yeah. in our essence. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I see the and same. So you were what? But now we have come to the point of being the masters of limitation. But you were saying something about it because of that, it blocks our um, our mm. feel of connection to uh, the universal source, is that what you were saying? Didn't block, we were never disconnected. We were just consciously not paying attention to that experience. Remember Andrew saying, we had our experience and continue having our experience everywhere in this universe, on all levels of this universe. We just don't remember. We agreed not to remember. This is what that mastery limitation bringing to us. and. To do that, not to consciously remember about our connections, we had to kind of like forget, kind of like, and uh -huh. disconnect kind of like, we never disconnected. Without connection to source, uh, you don't exist. You are source. And this is that place inside of your heart where you can have that experience today, even with this duality still going around. Yeah, I agree. I like the I like the term you use a tiny space. I've never heard that term tiny space. It's but when you were saying tiny space, I got it. I got the tiny space. 
<laughs> Thank you. It's actually that. ancient name for that space. And it's uh, gotten from uh, Upanishad, 5,000 years old uh, teaching about, not even teaching, it's a sharing, it's a strange book. It's a sharing of 108 people who got into those places sacred space and tiny space and describe the experience. And this is how they call it tiny. Why? Because geometrically, it's really tiny. It's around three feet around you. That small torus connected to the tiny space, it's like a meter around you. So they call it tiny space. But when you go to that space, you open an infinitely small universe and it's the same universe like this one that we see with our astronomy, but rules of that inner universe, female, doesn't have linear time. It's different. It's uh, everything existed once and everything like in a female way to uh, create, you just think about something and it's already here. You don't need to build from blocks. This is a male way to create. And this is how outer universe created. It's built from blocks, but it's all coming from your tiny space. So you're saying that the tiny space is sort of a, like a female version and the outer space is the male version. Through your lower heart chakra, through your tiny mm -hmm. space, it's a space of, uh, possibilities, everything in uh, potential. This is the tiny space, it's a vacuum. It's a place where you and source are the same and where everything uh, can happen and you can take from that place and put it into outer world as we created outer world that you can touch it. Again, mm -hmm. it's all holographic. Even your tiny space, it's a holographic representation of source, of consciousness. But through lower heart chakra, that place where it's connected to tiny space, you can go to that infinitely small universe, female um, version of universe. Tiny space, it's a space, but through lower heart chakra, through tiny space, you can go to that infinitely small universe. But you experiencing first touch. Sometimes people go into tiny space and they are in the vastness of universe among stars. You have that experience because it is part of our holographic universe. So but you're saying in other words- Vibration. It's a more vibrational state. Uh, all this teaching, it's experience, more than teaching. I'm trying to put into words, but you can feel it inside of you and that is your experience. So at, at, when I work with people, I prepare them going through understanding of limitations and their personal stories, just to be able to open their possibility to have that experience. And then it's just happening because it's part of us. This is who we are. We created that hologram. So you're saying in other words, in the tiny spaces where you go and you create from that tiny space, um, the universe that we see, the solid, you know, the, the solid holographic universe that we see. Is that right? Yes. Did I get this that right? This is exactly, what, yes. Yeah, you, so you have to go to the tiny space first and then you co-create from there the, the things you see in the universe. Exactly. This is exactly true and it's literally. It's strange mm -hmm. experience and I would say strange words that is literally, but when you have that experience, it is becoming kind of like explainable for you. You understand that this is that everything and nothing in potential, it's your tiny space. You and source closest connection in this holographic unfoldment. 
Mm -hmm. I just throw the word in or two words, celestial medium. What is that? What that's about? To me, that's that space. When you go into that space of celestial mediumship where you are connected. I would say it's a prayer celestial medium. It's a prayer celestial medium. It's like everything that then you can create and celestial medium and something else. It doesn't have definition. It's a vacuum. This is closest yes. experience. It's like a dough for everything you can cook. Okay, I'm just wondering if we can just throw in the words, you know, just for because we are familiar with the celestial medium. So if it's pre or, you know, right there, that that when you speak, that's for me is when I go into celestial mediumship. I would say uh, uh, celestial mediumship, it's already formed into something. It's already get, got some kind of direction intention for experience some color some kind of definition tiny space doesn't have anything um, defined already it's everything and nothing everything in potential so you can put it together anyhow celestial medium i must see it's already got some direction okay so shall we call it can, can we call it the void space yeah yeah we can call it, call it void so space. You, you, what, what you're saying is that um, from tiny space uh, comes celestial medium. You create out of tiny space the celestial medium. Yes? Everything. Everything you yeah. cre cre create from that vacuum. Like I said, vacuum, even vacuum not defining. We don't have really words for that. But when I say everything and nothing, everything in potential, it's kind of like closest what I can put into words. And how again, it is experience. Yeah. How about if we take, a, you know, the one thing about teaching that's vital is verbiage vocabulary, understanding what each of the words mean and celestial mediumship. Martina, I've heard you use it with Andrew a lot, but I never really got an understanding of what that meant. And I'm listening today to the same thing happening with the word of tiny space and master of limitations. So I just want to throw this in and maybe it will help somebody reflect back to me or reflect to someone else. Becoming a master of limitations, to me, I look at the self that I'm functioning from, this body, this physical body, and those things that have happened to me or to this body that limit me in some way. And in this lifetime, I'm striving to master those so that they don't limit me, therefore becoming a master of limitations. I'm making anything that's limiting me not a limit, but somehow a catalyst to move me forward. And when I hear the word that small, how, what were your words for it, Irina? The tiny small? space. Let's, let's feel the tiny discuss. Space. Let's first Let's, discuss about this masters of limitation for you just make a statement. Okay. In your explanation, what I feel, I feel already forces uh, that is already fighting forces, pushing and pulling forces. I mastering them not to be da da da. It's not about that. Masters well, of I don't mean I don't mean like fighting. I'm saying becoming becoming skilled, becoming fuller, becoming more of yourself and not allowing limitations to limit you. It's not a but battle. But you're still in duality when you do that. You already mastered limitations. You already master of limitations, but I'm now- I'm just trying to say what I think you mean by being a master of limitations. That's yeah, all I'm, I'm trying to, to explain. Do. It's not what you trying to put meaning. When I say master of limitation, I see it, we already mastered. This entire- yeah. Experience yeah, yeah. already mastered limitations, everything, right. all sides, everything. Right, but it's a it's a, a state of awareness to understand that you're not being limited by it. You know, so. Excuse me, I missed. I was trying to read stuff. 
<laughs> on the uh, screen. <laughs> can I say something here? What I, what I think that the master of limitation in my, my perspective, my mind is that it's like uh, taking away a little bit more each day from your existence. So you come down to a point where, uh, what are you going to do with what you're left with? How can you use what you're left with? It's like uh, trying to uh, cook a meal and uh, your recipe has 10 ingredients in there. And each time you cook, somebody takes away one more ingredients or you're out of a, an ingredient and you have to make that meal with nine. And then you, uh, each time you do it, you have one less ingredients until you come to the point where you only have two ingredients. How is it that you're gonna use these two ingredients to create your meal? So you are so limited, but if you can figure a way out how to use the two ingredients, you could probably make a very tasty meal out of it and still exist with a delicious um, meal in the end, right? Does that make sense? Master of limitation, in my understanding, it's a state of being. You got it as a vibration already immediately when you just got to that point of view, it's opening for you completely like a state of being, like a vibration. It's not a, a, a way, it's not a linear experience. Then you process what it means for you. Then you go to linear experience, working with those events and situations that you had in your era of limitation experience. This is where you work with contract revocation, with charge, making those experiences, bringing them in neutrality, and then integrate your experience of, of limitations as just experience, as Andrew teaching. That yes, but in a, uh, when you just got into that master of limitation, it's a vibrational state. You see it, or you still mastering it, or you already recognize I am master of limitation. I am done with duality. I don't need to fight. I don't need to prove. I don't need to do any experience in that direction. I am done with it. Then you got entire thing, and then you can look. Okay, what is on my pizza? Oh, I have cheese. I have some uh, olives. I have some, 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 some. Okay, I don't like olives. Why I don't like olives? Oh, okay, some da 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 da. And you work with that experience through your remembering why you had to not to like olives and why olives today on your pizza. And you connect your dots. And you're like, oh, yes, if I would not put those olives in my past on a pizza, I would eat that pizza forever and never stop eating pizza. But when I put olives, I said, no, I'm not eating pizza. I don't like pizza because it's olives on that pizza. Is it good metaphor? And then you remember, oh, interesting. I can have olives separate. I can have olives added to pizza. And it doesn't make me now react on that pizza, deny that pizza. I accept at some point I had pizza without olives. Then I had pizza with olives. And now I can have whatever. I integrated that experience. I'm not depending on that experience anymore. Yeah, I get what you're saying. I yeah. can't explain it like you, but I got it. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. This uh, um, uh, just came to me. I never uh, talked these words before about this uh, kind like example. Uh, but this is that preparation thing. Why? You can't show, but you can't make your horse drink that water. It's your personal experience. Are you already in that vibration that you're stepping and you are saying, I can drink, I can skip, I can do whatever. Or you still saying, I don't see that pond. I don't see that water. It's not water of quality I would like to drink. And you still in that experience, something must happen for me to drink. It's all you. And this is why I'm talking about tiny space. It's coming from inside, from that everything and nothing in possibility, in possibility. You can bring that needed quality of water at any time into your external environment. 
it's harder yet, but when we start to remember, you can do it really, really. You can change, start to change your environment around you. And if you start to go with your remembering in your past, you know, like those fairy tales, I create a um, uh, castle. I open my eyes and my castle just in front of me. It was our reality at some point. And this is where we are now returning. It's my vision, my explanation. Okay, Robin, you wanted to ask something about tiny space, correct? No, I didn't want to ask. I just wanted to say what I was feeling you were speaking of, but I don't, listening right now, I don't know if I should even share it. When you say tiny space, to me, what I feel is it feels like that eternal spot and essence of me that came forth from the beginning of whatever time and space that I came forth as a field of intelligence and that in order to get to this physical form, that essence of what I say, I, me, had to go through in order to come and inhabit in this physical form. And in this physical form, I had to forget that I was, you know, like an extension, another extension. So when you speak of the tiny self, to me, it's in this human form, the allowance that is created to connect back to that, to be part of that, to be, to understand that we're not severed from it. We don't have to make a connection. We just have to remember that we are a continuation of it. We, we, we are it, that essence of the divine flow. Yes, true, true. One only thing I would put my little word we forgot about that space, not because we became humans, because we stepped into this limitation experience, because when we started as humans, we were still remembering, we were still creating consciously from that tiny space, bringing everything into our environment. Remember, like we uh, remember about Lemurian time, how beautiful it was. It's just unbelievably beautiful. It was complete love surrounding us, inside of us. We were love and then it start to just go into that limitation thing and we start to forget more and more and more and fi finally we forgot when that space from where everything we still creating we still creating from there but it distorted with that charge of experience yeah yeah like your words robin yeah okay guys anything else We good? So let me bring you through that meditation. Would you like to do it? We call that meditation unity breath meditation. Uh, and uh, essence of that meditation, uh, it is kind like known in entire world, especially uh, indigenous world, it is known. Uh, and uh, in different places, they call it differently. But uh, in this teaching, it came through Drunvala from Yogananda teacher, um, uh, Yuktushwar. And he called it unity breath meditation. What in truth, in essence, it is, it is uh, your love connection from your heart as you can understand and feel your heart today as a human being. Any, any understanding of your heart with Mother Earth and understanding that this is your divine mother and your love connection from your heart as a human being to your divine father that is all life everywhere, if you can call sun, central sun, father sky. Uh, if you have perception of grids around, energetic grids around Earth, it can be grids, but it can be simply heaven your connection with love. And again, I love to add Andrew definition, do no harm to any sentient kind. This is what I would call my divine father, Father Sky. 
So this is that connection from your heart. And then you recognize that you are divine child of those divine parents, Mother Earth and Father Sky. And you are in the midst of that connection of love. And you feel as you can today, love for yourself. And you will spread that love for yourself through all your bodies, accepting everything that you are ever did now or ever will be. It doesn't matter how it looks, but you love and accept everything that you are. You have an experience, had experience, will have experience. So that love for yourself, you feel it, you spread it. And then this is what activating at this moment of your meditation, we call it Holy Trinity. You can call anyhow, but it's a, the Trinity that is uh, essence, first seed of this creation, duality, Trinity, yeah? Everything comes in three, um, white, black, and gray. So, and you are the divine child your divine mother, Mother Earth, your divine father, Father Sky, and you feel that love connection among three, among three, and you feel it inside of you, and that is activating that special vibration that is the same or very similar in synchronicity in your sacred space, outer space. I forgot to mention difference of tiny space and sacred space. Sacred space, it's a place of Akashic record. It's all records. It's everything in neutrality, tiny space, everything in unity. And this is that place of creation. This is difference. Okay, and this is how we will finish this meditation. You will feel, you will be in that vibration of Holy Trinity alive on earth right now. Love connection to between among three of you. How it sounds to you guys. Great for me. Fabulous. Let's do it. Let's do it. So I will ask you to close your eyes. You can uh, uh, do anything with your video uh, and just, I will start to play a little music just to give us a little direction. At some point, I will quiet music and it will completely disappear. But for now, it's just making a little bit easier for us to start our process. I ask you to close your eyes. Breathe in. And empty yourself ha, completely. Breathe another one in. And empty yourself completely. Ha. Continue breathing rhythmically. In and out. Feel comfortable, relaxed joyful. In your vision, see, sense, feel, know your favorite place in nature. It can be anything, ocean, mountain, woods, meadows, flowers, rivers, anything. Your favorite place in nature and begin to feel fullness of your presence in that favorite place in nature. 
breathe there. Feel it on your skin, everything that is happening in your favorite place in nature. And begin to feel that love, love for nature growing inside of your heart. Make your presence in your favorite place in nature as real as you can. Breathe and feel that love inside of your heart for nature growing stronger and stronger. That place in nature that you love so much. When time is right, spread your love for nature to entire nature of Mother Earth. Love everything. Oceans, rivers, mountains, trees, flowers, everything. Love everything entire mother earth in that beauty. Feel that love for your divine mother growing inside of your heart, stronger and stronger. Breathe that love in, breathe that love out. Breathe more and more of that love inside of you, allow Allow that love for your divine mother to enter your heart. Beauty. Love. Feel that inside of your heart right now. Your love for your divine mother, Mother Earth. Have that experience inside of your entire body right now, spread that love for your divine mother through all your bodies, physical, emotional, mental, light body, feel it everywhere in you. And now when that love strong inside of your heart, with your intention, Send your love from your heart down to center of earth, heart of your divine mother, mother earth. This is your intention. And feel your love reached heart of your divine mother, mother earth. And now, Open your heart wider and allow her love to enter your heart. Feel that flow of love going from your heart down to heart of your divine mother, mother earth, center of earth, and back to you, to your heart. Feel that flow of love connecting your heart and your divine mother. From your heart, love going down and from your divine mother, mother earth, love coming back to your heart. Feel it in your heart. Don't stop that flow from below, that love connection. And now look up. And in your vision, see sun, sky, or night sky with moon, stars, planets. Feel that awe, that feeling of amazement when you look into sky. It is your divine father. For the sky, for the sun, Central sun greets simply heaven. Feel that amazement 
start to accumulate inside of you. Feel it inside of your heart. Your love for that beauty, for that mystery that is above you. All life everywhere. Do no harm to any sentient kind. In your heart right now, you feel that love for your divine father. Growing stronger and stronger. And when that love for life everywhere, strong inside of your heart, with your intention, send your love up and you can connect with sun, central sun, grids, or simply heaven. Your divine father receives that love. Life everywhere receives that love. And now, Open your heart wider and allow love of your divine father come to you, to your heart. Feel that flow of love going through your heart from above, from your heart, love for life going up and returning back to you. Feel that flow of love going through your heart from above, connecting you with your divine father, all life everywhere. Signature frequency, do no harm to any sentient kind. Feel it in your heart. Feel both flows of love connecting now in your heart from below your love connection with your divine mother and from above your love connection with your divine father. Feel that kiss of love between your divine mother and your divine father in your heart. You divine child in the midst of that flow feel love for yourself love everything that you are spread that love for yourself through all your bodies physical emotional mental light body love everything accept everything that you are and this moment See triangle in front of you or continue with vertical. If it is triangle, one corner, it's you. Another corner, it's your divine mother. Another corner, it's your divine father. If it is vertical, you are in the middle. Above you, your divine father. Below you, your divine mother. And now feel your love connection between you and your divine mother, between you and your divine father, and between them, mother earth and father sky. In your heart. At this moment, Holy Trinity alive on earth and vibration of that Holy Trinity inside of your heart right now. Spread that vibration of Holy Trinity through all your bodies, physical, emotional, mental, light body. Become that vibration. Breathe. Don't stop that vibration. And when you are ready, begin to feel your body in your room. And when you are ready, 
start to open your eyes, still having that vibration going. Return to us. And if you want to share a couple words, if you have time for that, but mostly process that inside of you. This is at beginning of returning, again, an understanding of this teaching to remember. It was beautiful, Irina. Thanks very much huh, for guiding us through that one. Did you guys feel it? Yes, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you for letting me talk and share my passion, my excitement in this life. No, no, no. This is, this. you know, the pleasure is all ours. Thank you so much, you know, for letting us in well you always do anyway but giving us a bit more background you know with the work that you do and everything it's been it's been very very good i i really enjoyed it and i also like the way you know you're combining you know the different teachings and making them your own you know and that's what we do here we pick and choose does any anyone want to share something about the um about the meditation before we Alfred, did you drive and did this meditation? Oh, no, what? <laughs> no, no I, I, I was peacefully by the tree. I need to get a new phone because this battery is not, it's not making it anymore. But no, I was meditating by the tree and the phone died. And, yeah, got to go to the car. Um, but no, thank you, Irina, because I haven't had this. This is also like, so I always think about breathing. I always forget like breathing and that connection with the heart as well because it's always like, you know, this, you know, this portal space or just this whole connection to everything. And, and it, thank you. I haven't had this feeling like this in a while. So it was very, very enjoyable and pleasant. Um, but yeah, thank you, Irina. I, I, I just wanted to add to this too, because I had, uh, if you don't mind just to add, because I, I, I love your teachings, Irina. They're amazing. But I just, I had some thoughts going through my, um, through myself last night after I was, been watching a lot of emotional stuff and a lot of, a lot of oh, I think we lost him now. Mm -hmm. Alfredo, come She's back. Really come back. Whilst he's uh, on the on hold here, Nicola is saying attended Dranvolo's Heart and Merkaba workshop in 2014. Thanks, Irina, for sharing the teachings again. Are you Thank back, you. Um, Al Alfredo? No, it keeps on freezing. While Alfredo is getting back, um, I want to say thank you, Irina, for that um, wonderful meditation. Um, uh. <laughs> when you were saying um, you can open your eyes and come back in your own time, I almost kind of went the other way. <laughs> I was finally getting into it. And I almost fell asleep and I was like, oh, shocks, I'm going to open my eyes. <laughs> But uh, I wanted to say, um, I, I've listened to um, Dramvulo's um, teachings years ago when he was very popular on the internet at that time. But I always felt like something was missing as well. So I'm glad that you um, blended uh, the, the Andrew's teachings with his because that makes more sense. It, it makes it a little more complete and um, I can I can understand that, um, and so thank you for for um, bringing that forward. I don't feel like alone in that concept or thought that um, you know you can actually take two teachings and blend them together. You know? Thank you, Lana. Thank you. Yes, uh, and he was saying uh, 
Go heal yourself, Drunvala was saying, go heal yourself, then come to me, I will bring you to heart. But you see, we don't have that luxury anymore. We need to stay in our heart and be healed. So that combination of Andrew teaching and Drunvala and some other teachings that I went through before, it was just making sense more for practicality of this time of change. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think the, the piece that we were always missing was Andrew's teachings because a lot of teachers out there, even um, the Christian churches and everything, they would teach you the concept of love, but there was always some element that's missing from making the, the connections uh, more rounded, you know, where you can really uh, get the healing for yourself. Agreed. Because when somebody's saying to you, go, go heal yourself, I mean, if you don't know the other part of why then you're not going to get that healing to be complete so now blending as a matter of fact blending everything you've heard from other teachers in the past you just take a little bit from each part and you and you bring it in with what andrew uh taught us and and then you can really get to that point of where you can move forward with your healing you know so thank you yeah Thank you, Lana. This is what Andrew said. You must become your mystery school, your personal mystery school. Remember everything put together yeah. into some combination of remembering and just go with that through life. Yeah, this is what we do. We all do. Fabulous. Yeah, and I think, we're, I think we're getting to that point now where we're getting that concept of take everything together, bring it into your own mystery school and become your own mystery school for yourself so you can heal individually. He emphasizes heal individually as well. Yeah. Alfredo, you're back. Yeah, I, I just wanted to, I would ask uh, Irina's permission if I could, I had some cool thoughts going through my mind last night because I've been watching some emotional stuff on Netflix with her. But, uh, oh yeah, is that okay, Irina? It's just three lines. Yeah. Um, the, I'm making these realizations because I've been having a lot of like unity consciousness moments with a lot of my coworkers. Because, like, when I'm anchored in, like everybody just starts moving at this super speed, and it's just this total unity feeling and vibe, and the environment is just amazing. Because I know I, <laughs> it, it, yeah. Um, but anyways, I realize like I appreciate everyone in my reality wherever they are on their journey, and I know that deep down everyone loves each other. It's what binds us all together. It is the fabric of the reality that we exist in. And a reminder to myself, connect to the internet within and disconnect from the internet more. <laughs> but yeah, I just wanted to say that. And thank Irina for the meditation, it was amazing. Very thank connecting. <laughs> thank you. Fantastic, fantastic. Thank you very much, Irina. Thank you very much for everyone coming on and your contributions and as always, you know, holding space and your energy. And of course, you know, that recording will be on replay again. And again, that's an invitation for anyone who wants to come, come on. I remember, you know, Robin did her lovely drumming, you know, and Amy did already something. Alfredo did something. So we're waiting for Tom now. Let's put him on the spot, right? Mary's done something. Tom is the next one. Okay, no pressure. So have fun, guys. Uh, enjoy the eclipse, yeah? Robin, you are muted. Robin, you are muted. Robin, you are muted. Oh, sorry. Yeah. I was just going to throw it in there, Martina, that, um, you know, I did the drumming thing, but I really want to do something that's just a, a like a participatory spiritual thing, kind of like what Irina did today. Um, so um, if anybody else is open to that, um, you can kind of give me a nod, yes or no, to if I should, but. Um, I really would like to share like, you know, another group type of participation, taking you along as an experiential, hopefully use now experience. It will be your, your guinea pigs. Wonderful. Your experience, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Dimi me. And, uh, you know, we, we can just so that I know what to put out. But thanks okay. very much for coming forward on that. And, you know, I'm sure we, we will all appreciate that. So thanks very much, guys. And Irina, uh, thank you very much for today. I appreciate it. 
Mm. Absolutely. All right, guys. We'll see you next week. Okay. Eh? Take care. Bye. Bye. Good to see everybody. Thanks Bye. again. Bye. 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 Bye.